Hey, what's going on guys? DK. Back at you with another video here to write in the 2021 John Deere Classic Tournament that starts on Thursday. If you guys are new to the channel, welcome. My name is DK. I make daily videos and live stream for NBA and NFL sites on DraftKings. Also making videos for PGA, Daily Fantasy Sports, and NBA Top Shot. If you're unable to watch these videos, I uh, upload on Apple Podcasts. Link in the description below. It's called the DK DFS Show. And if you could leave a five-star rating and review, that would help me out a lot. If you're interested in signing up for premium content, offer that at patreon.com esports package. That includes Call of Duty and CSGO. We get CSGO slates every single day, and Call of, Duty, Call of Duty slates normally four times a week. With CSGO, LAN is officially returning tomorrow. Super excited for that. We have five games to go over in the main slate for DraftKings. Uh, again, slates every day with Counter Strike. And then I also offer an NBA package. Now, with the NBA package, if you sign up, you'll get these uh, PGA data sheets for free. Uh, you know, as I continue to, to wind, or the NBA season winds down, but we do have Olympics starting up soon, uh, TBT, hoping DraftKings will have contests for that, and then Summer League in, in, within a month. So still there's a lot of basketball, uh, you know, upcoming, and I plan to cover all three of those if DraftKings offer contests for all of them. Uh, and uh, finally, I want to thank Prize Picks for sponsoring this episode. So, if you guys are not familiar with Prize Picks or this is your first time watching uh, my videos, there's a couple of ways you can play it. Number one is you just straight uh, take uh, straight up fancy points over under. Um, so they'll post, you know, golfers and their projected fancy points, and you either take the over or the under. You can also play single stat DFS. Um, now for, for golf, uh, they have a couple posted. This is just for the match tomorrow, but like they have Bryson, Phil, and uh, you know, three and a half uh, birdies or better uh, is what the line is set for Bryson and Phil. So again, basically you either take the under or the over. Uh, if you like either of those, you can also mix and match sports. They have every single sport you can think of. So if you guys want to try it out, you can sign up. Please go DKDFS. DKDFS, all one word, link down below. You'll get 100% match up to $100. Basically, you put $100 and you get a free $100 to play with. I'm going to give you guys a special shout out for, for all you guys uh, continuing to come out and check these videos, continuing to hit that like button. Again, it goes a long way, helps me out a lot, allows me to get more viewers on these videos. So uh, if you do enjoy this content, if you could, guys, again, leave a like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you don't upload videos and you don't look live. Let's try to aim for 50 likes on this video. All right, so let's jump into it. I guess recapping uh, the tournament last week went decent for me, but nothing crazy. Uh, Bryson missing the cut was um, surprising, but that's that's the thing with PGA Daily Fantasy Sports is a lot of variance, right? A golfer can look amazing. Everything can look great. Or he was far and away, uh, you know, the best golfer in that field. He won it last year. And things happen, right? It just the variance in golf uh, you know, makes it makes it a little bit fun, but also a little bit tilting at times too. Yeah, Bryson was what forty ish percent in the big tournament and the higher dollar stuff. I think he was a little bit higher owned. Um, and yeah, that stuff like that can happen. Like some golfers can literally look amazing for this course. Uh, you know, they they can have great course history. They can be in great form, and they can just have a couple of blow up poles and miss the cut, and, and you're done, right? So things like that can happen. Uh, with PGA Data Fantasy Sports, again, can make it fun, but also can make it tilt. You got to uh, embrace the variance if you're playing every single week. So let's uh, jump into, again, what I have included on this uh, data sheet here for the John Deere Classic. And we got uh, the player name, uh, the drafting salary, their Vegas odds. So 900 to 1 is basically 9 to 1 odds to win for Daniel Berger. He is the favorite in this field. The average points per game, this is on DraftKings. Course history of the last three years included here. They did not play in 2020. And the strokes gained rankings, a ton of stuff here. Approach, birdie or better, driving, actually putting around the green, off the tee. Tee to green, total, par three scoring, par four, par five scoring. A lot of good stuff included on this. Um, you know, for, for this course, I think, obviously, I always rate uh, approach pretty high. Uh, birdie or better things to me are pretty important. It's a, um, you know, easier course, I guess, they're going to be. Uh, you know, some, some low numbers for sure. Uh, accuracy and, and putting, uh, I think, are once again four uh, of the main metrics I, I want to look at, look at for this John Deere Classic. All right, so we'll start off with, with the top guys. Uh, so everyone 10K plus. Again, this is, as you can tell by just looking at these names, um, not the best field, right? It is not the most talented. A lot of guys are in, what, the Scottish Open, I believe it is, uh, actually preparing for the British Open next week. I believe it's the Scottish Open. They do have uh, contest for that in DraftKings. Here, let me just confirm that. But it's way, way smaller uh, payout structure. Let's see. Uh, yeah, Scottish Open. And uh, the field's better in that one. But again, the the, the contests are not as big. So like Rahm, Horikawa, McElroy, Xander, JT, Scheffler. 
a lot of the big names are in that one. But again, we're going to be breaking on this one since it's in the PGA Tour. And again, we'll start with the 10K plus guy. So Cam Davis won it uh, last week. He's been in, obviously, a decent form after that win. Brian Harmon, Sanja M, Daniel Berger. So for me, I think Daniel Berger is the guy that since it's the most, even though he's the most expensive at 11.1K, I think I'm spending up for a guy over 10K. It's going to be Berger. And the, the big favorite here, 9 to 1 odds to win. Um, you know, course history, the last two times he's played it, he's played well, fifth in 2017, 33rd in, in 2019. His, his numbers look pretty solid, great and birdie or better in approach, eighth and 14th. Uh, accuracy is decent and, and putter, uh, he's good with the putter as well. So Dana Berger, I think, is the guy that I'm spending all the way up. It's going to be him. Sanja M, Brian Harmon, I think are fine plays. Neither um, really stand out their respective prices. Again, I think I would just rather get uh, or spend a little bit more for, for a guy like Daniel Berger over Sanjay and Brian Harmon. Now, again, Cam Davis, he won it last uh, last week. He's 25 to 1 odds to win. Um, I think it might be a little bit overpriced. Uh, you know, accuracy, not the best there, 184. Um, around the green also is not be- not great for a guy like Cam Davis. So, reasons he buys might be a little bit over-owned. I think I'll pass on, on Cam Davis. So, now, let's move on to the 9K guys. We have Henley at 9.9, Streelman at 9.7, Kevin Nott at 9.5. Alex Norton at 9.3, Aaron Wise at 9.2, Siwoo Kim at 9.1, Seamus Power at 9K. So a lot of these guys you'll see in the 9K range. Normally you're kind of seeing the low 7K or even high 6K range. Again, making this field, again, not, not as talented. But um, so look at the guys in, in the 9K range. So I think Streelman's the guy that, that stands out for me at 9.7. He's 20 to 1 odds to win. Uh, he's made the cut last couple of years here. 7th in, in 2018, 44th in 2017. Uh, all the numbers look pretty good for him. 33rd in approach, 53rd in birdie or better, 48th in accuracy. Putter is just about average. So uh, Streamland's a guy that I like in this 9K range. Let's see, what else? Um, nah, Norin, I think I'll probably pass on. They're both 33 to 1 odds to win, but I don't think either really stand out. I think Siwoo Kim is another guy I'm looking to at 9.1K, 33 to 1 odds to win. Uh, you know, the one time he's played uh, in this course last three years, he did get cut, but that doesn't worry me too much. Numbers are nothing crazy, but not bad. 76th in approach, 57th birdie or better, 84th in accuracy, 125th in the putter. So I think Siwoo Kim looks like a pretty decent play in the lower 9K range. Also, same as Power uh, at 9K. He's made the cut the last three years, even though making it barely in 2019, finished 61st. Um, but he's a guy that uh, is a, it's a good approach player, 34th, uh, decent in, in birdie or better, accuracy, and uh, on putting. So... I think it's Strillman at the top of the 9K range and, and uh, Siwoo Kim and Samus Power at the lower end. Okay, so 8K range. we got a lot of guys to talk about here. Uh, Patton Kazari at 8.9. Maverick McNeely, uh, Merritt, Glover, Zach Johnson, uh, Hank Lebiota, Ryan Moore, Doc Redman let me down last week, uh, Sebastian Munoz, uh, Doug Gim, and Jonathan Vegas. So a lot of guys to talk about. Uh, Zach Johnson thinks to be decently popular. He, he's at 8.5K, 40 to 1 odds to win, not bad. And he has uh, played really well, course history. 37th, 16th, 5th. However, again, they didn't play last year. His numbers, nothing crazy. However, he is a very good putter. You can see third, uh, third ranked putter overall uh, for this year. What else kind of stands out here uh, at the top? Um, Patton Kazari at 8.9K. You know, looks solid. Uh, has made the cut the last two years he's played. 19th of birdie or better. That that stands out. Again, you're going to need to make some birdies, obviously, on uh, the John Deere Classic. So um, I do like that. Again, 62nd in approach. Uh, decent in putting, too. Uh, the, the accuracy is where he, he struggles a little bit. But I'm not going to put uh, – or I'm not going to let that get get uh, get me off Kazari. Uh, let's see. What else do we got here in the in the AK range? Again, I know Doc Redman let me down last week. But I still think he looks like a solid play uh, on this course. 50 to 1 odds to win. Uh, did make the cut last year. Numbers, I mean, you get in this range, the numbers aren't going to look great on everyone, but I think he's someone that, uh, that I'm eyeing as well in the lower 8K range. Um, Let's see. Anything else I want to mention here? I think that's probably it. So let's move on to the 7K range. A lot of guys to talk about here. So not going to be able to go everyone. Uh, Dylan Fertelli won it last uh, time they played it here in 2019. He's only 7.8K. So, uh, you know, would I go to Fratelli? I mean, the numbers are really not great on him. Approach, birdie or better, driving accuracy, putting, all, you know, 180 plus. Ugh. That is, that's not great. Um, now, again, it, it doesn't mean like, sure, his numbers right now don't really suit this course, but 
he won it last year. Again, that embrace the variance with PGA Day, Day of Fantasy Sports. That's that's there's a lot of variance involved. Uh, Harold Varner HV3. I think it looks like a pretty good play below 8K. Uh, 80 to one odds to win. Has made the cut last couple of years. Numbers nothing crazy. 46 in approach. That's decent. So I do have some interest there in Harold Varner for value. Scrolling down the list a little bit more, uh, Steve Stricker, even though he's getting up there in age, still has been in, uh, you know, has played the course well last two times. He's played it 5th uh, in 2017, 43rd in 2018. So I, I think Stricker is decent value uh, at that price. Richie uh, Werniski at 7.6, I think also looks, looks for a pretty good value play. Uh, 47th, 23rd, and 25th last three years. So he's made the cut uh, the last three years he has played the numbers. All kind of average, a little bit below average, but a lot of guys in the seven to six K range, not a lot's gonna look good. So uh, you gotta, you know, make a stand and one or two things here. And and one thing that we can definitely look to is the fact that he has made the cut the last three years. And once you get kind of to this low, uh, mid to low seven K range in the six K range, you really just want your guys to make the cut, and and that's you'll be happy. Okay, um, another guy I want to mention here, Chez Revy uh, at seven point five K. So he's 22nd in approach, fourth in, in driving, actually. However, the birdie or better numbers and, and putting numbers are not great. But I do think that the approach and, and the fact that he's very accurate with the driver could lead him to a solid weekend. So I do have some interest there at that price. Just going down a little bit more. Henrik Norlander seems to always come through for me at some point. Okay, another value guy I do like. Uh, you know, good in the approach, good uh, off the tee, you know, in driving accuracy. However, again, the, the birdie or better in putter and putting is where he struggles. But Putting, there's also a lot of variance with golf. You know, some some weekends, some a guy can get really, really hot, even though he's a bad putter. And, you know, another tournament, someone can be a very good putter and, and really struggle. Uh, so putting, I think there is, with, with PGA, there's, there's a little bit more variance involved. So, you know, for a guy that struggles with the putter, um, there's always that chance that he could get hot in the weekend and, and kind of turn it around. So I think Henrik Norlander is a guy at 7.3K that I also have some interest in for value. Let's see, what else do we have here in the lower 7K range? Honestly, not a ton. And I'm going to say the same in the 6K range. Um, Ryan Armour, I mean, he's second in driving accuracy, 46th in putting, 67th in birdie or better, 125 to one odds to win. However, he has gotten cut last couple of times he's played here, but I think he's worth a dart throw at that cheap price point. Vaughn Taylor made the cut last three years and has played well, too. 6th, 34th, and 19th. Uh, he's 24th in driving, actually 39th in, in putting. I think he also makes for a decent punt play. Another guy that I do like a good amount here, Sadoshi, uh, Satoshi Kodara. Kodara? Kodara. Um, again, I'm, I'm probably mispronouncing one or two of these names, guys, uh, for PGA. So, um, sorry about that. But, yeah, Satoshi is a guy that has been playing really well of late. He had a couple of blow-up holes last week. That's the reason he, he missed the cut. But I'm fine going there at 7K. Again, form's been really good. Uh, numbers look pretty solid here, too. 10th in driving accuracy, 81st in birdie. Better 68th in putting. So I do like Satoshi there at 7K. I think he'll be decently popular, but I think it's for good reason. Now, in the 6K range, again, there is really not much here. I think Adam Shank, I mentioned him last week, also looks okay. Sixth uh, here two years ago. Uh, you know, overall approach, birdie better, accuracy, putting numbers, about average, nothing crazy. But at that price point, I think that does make him a pretty decent play. Sam Ryder has made the cut last couple of years. He's played 18th and 2nd uh, in 2019 and 2018. He's only 6.8K. He's 151 odds to win. I think he makes for a viable punt play. Brunson has also made the cut last couple of years, uh, 47th and 2nd in 2018. Is there anything else I really want to mention here? Um, again, you're, you're getting to the range of just dart throws. If you play one of these guys, you, you just got to hope they make the cut. But there's definitely some guys viable down here. Um, Anders Romero has made the cut two the last three years. Same with Scott Brown. A lot of guys you're going to be not super familiar with with these names. But, yeah, I think that's really it. So, if you guys have been enjoying the content so far, I would really appreciate it if you leave a like button on the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the notification bell so you don't upload videos and you don't want to go live. Thanks again, guys. Have a great day, and I'll see you all later.